Hey everyone, wanted to make a quick video on Arlong as an update to my last list that I was testing. Uh, this update comes after the restrictions on red have been lifted for OPO5. So wanted to essentially tweak the deck a bit, give it a, a bit more of a late game edge, uh, knowing that you might see uh, Newgate, which is a 6k leader more often. You might see character Newgate, which buffs leaders to 7k. So a board full of 5ks, which is what the previous list was kind of focused on, is a little less viable. Um, so made some adjustments, have done some testing. It's pretty fun. Uh, Going to jump into those matches. A lot of those matchups will be similar to uh, the last video, but just using this new list. And there are a couple of new ones in there. I uh, also am really, really excited to test Red Purple Kid. That video is coming soon. Just waiting for this to get updated with the, the restriction being lifted so that I can use some of those cards in that Red Purple Kid list. I think he's very, very overlooked uh, out of the starter uh, deck 10 leaders uh, and so early testing with some friends has been has been really fun with that leader and i think it'll be a really cool video as always thank you to everyone who has subscribed who's dropped likes dropped comments uh it really means a lot i'm definitely getting more attention than i thought i would on these videos i'm pretty sure they were just going to go into the void so really appreciate the folks who think these are cool and and like kind of seeing videos with these off meta leaders that don't get as much love as as your tier one tier zero decks all right with that let's jump into some matches all right, starting with an aggro versus aggro matchup against Bello Betty. I got the first, which is really, really great. I also have Pero Sparrow in hand, which in a lot of situations is such an amazing first play for Arlong because um, most decks don't have, unless you're playing against something that has like bottom decking, uh, most decks will have to attack into it if they want to kill it um, on the, like, the subsequent turns. So being able to put that out first, um, even if it gets KO'd, at least you get another card in your hand. So kind of a best case scenario. Especially with this first attack, because of, you know if they run something like a jet pistol, maybe not Bello Betty, but just like any deck running like a jet pistol or a shockwave or something like that, uh, your your Parasparo can just kind of die uh, right as it's played, which is very unfortunate and has happened a lot. So it's kind of the perils of of Arlong's ability. Uh, you can't really avoid those triggers, and so if it's Parasparo, at least you get a card back. It's not it's not the absolute worst case scenario where you're down a body and down a card. Um, but I, I swing seven K. I play the Parasparo. The Betty plays Karasu, which is such a such a good card in this deck. Uh, being able to put a leader to 4k is so crazy. And I've been definitely been hit with like a double Karasu turn against Bella Betty in the past. Um, and so <laughs> being at 3k is just like indefensible, basically. Um, I get the Power Spare off life, really, really, and I draw into another one. So this is just kind of, I would say, an abnormally good hand for me. Um, because all of those all of those cards can just draw me another card. And they're they're very powerful attackers. Uh, so I do 5k with the first one, 7k with the second one, and then 7k with Arlong to play the third one. Um, against Bello Betty, I really just want to go as fast as possible. This is not a matchup that you win if you drag it out, for the most part. Uh, but the other thing is Bello Betty can run out of steam, especially because she's trashing cards to use her ability. Um, she's countering out, obviously, when she can. She has to trash cards if she pulls things from trigger, which so far she hasn't, which has been really good for me. So it's definitely a match that can go very, very wrong very, very quickly. And if you're not careful, you will you will just lose. Plays the Inazuma, which gets rush if you buff uh, something over 7,000 power. And so likely planning to, to use her ability here just to activate that Inazuma rush. Thinking it over. And plays Kuwala to minus 2k um, my Paris Pro, which I think was kind of unnecessary. I think if I was the Betty in this situation, I would probably just um, play that Inozuma, use an ability, keep a 2k in hand, and then just go face. Um, obviously, the or, or just go 7k into the Paris Pro or something like that. Um, if you're trying to clear a board, uh, obviously, the... Um, I have a lot of life. I have, I have three life. Uh, and having three attackers go into Betty on the subsequent turn is scary. So I can see why they went for board. I just don't think the quality was necessary. Like bringing me down an extra 2k. Um, you could have just used that 2 Dawn to buff something up 2,000 power more aggressively. So I don't know. Uh, that's probably the only thing I would do differently. And now they've cleared two of my Power Sparrows. I'm not super concerned because they only have three cards in hand. And I have a Lin Lin in my hand, and I pull a Cracker off life. So I am just hitting the trigger lottery. I drop the the pudding there just so that um, I can play Lin Lin next turn. And then I'm going to take another 7k here. I'm at 4k power, which is like really, really uh, frustrating. And then I get the uh, 
Kurobi off life as well, resting the koala, just another attacker. Um, so I, I have gotten very fortunate here. I decide to try to go for game. So the first thing I do is I swing 7k with the cracker as kind of a test, because that lets me know how, what's the, uh, what does their hand look like? Uh, and if I get through that 7k, I know I'm guaranteed the win. And then I try 5k here, uh, just to see if that goes through, because then I can go 7k, 7k. It doesn't, which lets me freely kind of start clearing their board without too much concern. Uh, I have a lot of 2ks in hand, so I was felt comfortable doing this kind of small poke uh, rather than committing hard to to winning the game there. I didn't want to like bring um, Cracker off to 9k uh, only to not be able to deliver a finishing blow because I didn't have enough done. So I, I did it this way. I pulled up a blocker and then I have two 2ks um, in hand. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty safe for the most part. Uh, especially since I know that uh, this Bellow Betty has nothing else in hand. So I just need to, I can block one attack and I just need to counter out of the other one, which with three 2Ks is, is a very, very easy to do. So first they go 8K on the Betty, and then I just I just counter out there. There's there's really nothing else they can do, even if they can clear board or try to clear board a little. It's it's not super concerning for me because I have the Django in hand. Um, and yeah, they just can see there, 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 there is no winning that, even if they pull like Sanji off life, which they wouldn't be able to play. So. Moving on, our next match is the Purple Luffy, which is one of the fan favorites of OP05. Uh, we played against Purple Luffy with our last list. We're going to actually see two matches with this Luffy because they wanted to rematch. And um, I thought it'd be kind of just interesting to watch, considering that Purple Luffy, Sakazuki, and NL are, are going to be the three main OP05 leaders that you will see if you play this deck at locals or, or are brave enough to bring them to a competitive. Um, so, yeah, just want to show you what that matchup looks like. Great start for the Luffy. Gets the, the ulti page one combo off. I have three crackers in hand, which is definitely, um, you know, not bad, but probably overkill. I, I would rather some of those just be other cards just for some diversity, maybe a Sanji. Um, and so I, I play one on, on my first turn. I, I don't know why this Luffy chose to go first. He chooses to go first the second game as well. And I'm, I'm not sure... I, I was under the impression that for, for Purple Luffy, you want to go second, um, because then you can kind of take a life um, when you're at four dawn and get to five and then play something like a Magellan or or that kid blocker. But he, he did it this way, so maybe just to, to get more aggression in. We'll see. I counter out with a 2k here, uh, then he goes 5k, and then another 5k, and I counter out with a cracker here. So now I have six dawn. I can play another cracker so the first thing i do is swing into the ulti for seven which he takes and then i swing into the page one for eight which he's thinking about it and he takes that as well so now i have two crackers on board i've cleared his board a little bit uh, i'm feeling better i don't have a lot of counter in hand which is a little concerning and so I think that's why I went for board. Um, seeing two 6Ks, a 5K, and then the Luffy leader itself on the board was a little intimidating. So I wanted to clear that out a bit. First thing he does is hit me with a top knot, um, which gets a lot of value in the matches we play, surprisingly. It's a very good card. Uh, bottom decks my, my cracker. And then he goes for the second cracker. Uh, because I, I don't really have that much counter, I don't really... Uh, want to, but I'm thinking about it, and I end up countering with the 2k, thinking he won't go with the blocker. I wanted to keep the, the Kurobi up to, to maybe do something with that. Um, but he <laughs> kind of outplayed me there, um, so I wasted a 2k for a bit. I do 6k into the blocker, see if he'll keep it, and then I just play a 7-drop Lin Lin. And he granted me a life. So I'm feeling like pretty good. We have similar hand sizes. Um, I, I, he has the Khalifa, so he will draw a card here, and I have Lumen, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, he plays the Magellan, which brings me down a Dawn. I'm at six Dawn. Yep, I'm at six Dawn, so I'll be at eight next turn. I not like I really play a lot of 10 Dawn cards, so that doesn't really do much against me. Maybe he was worried about, like, a 10-drop Luffy, or sorry, a 10-drop Doflamingo, which is some popular in some Arlong builds. But ultimately, not too much of a concern for myself. It just gives him a 6k at the end of the day. I 
counter out with Sanji for that one. And then he stops there. So he actually leaves three Dawn up and doesn't attack with the, the, the blocker this time. I try to clear out this um, this Khalifa so that he doesn't get draw. And it, um, I attack pretty poorly here because what ends up happening is that he Hell's Judgment, which I should have expected because it was right there, um, right there in his trash. But I, I guess I didn't think he would have a second one. And so I don't. I could have swung 5k, 5K with that uh, Lin Lin, but because he had the 6,000 power blocker, uh, he would have just blocked there, and then I would have had, um, you know, a tapped Lin Lin that he could go into, which I didn't really want. Now he plays the 7-drop kit, so now his board's looking a little scary. I, I have the Katakuri, so I can definitely do something about that kit next turn. Um, so I'm feeling good about that. I don't... I opt to keep my counter in hand, and I don't play that Para Sparrow. I also don't want to drop the Katakuri, because I'm going to need it to, to put that 7-drop kid back in his life. So I take two hits there. Now I'm at two life, and I put that Katakuri at the bottom, which gives me some free reign to start going into his board. I try to clear the Khalifa so that he no longer has those um, those draw draws from that ability. He's thinking here. He actually counters out of this swing, which I found surprising because he knew I had the two Lin Lin, so I wasn't sure why we, waste, we even waste the cards at that point. Uh, so yeah, that one goes through. I think that was probably a misplay as far as to, to counter there. Just let it go um, and, and uh, you know, keep the cards at hand. And then that goes through, and I don't really care about the effect because I'm at 10 Dawn, so I'll go down to 8 and back to 10 the next turn. So, you know, this is definitely a back and forth, it, it feels like. In terms of you know who has the board advantage, but right now I'm feeling very up on board advantage. His hand is, is similar size to mine, four cards versus my five. I have two Ks now, which feels a little better. Uh, so I think my goal is to kind of keep those little lanes alive, keep that kind of curry alive, and just uh, slowly whittle them down. He uses the ability to ramp one Don, and then plays the Kaido, which can only kill the pudding. Um, I, I kind of understand like why why he played it because he gets the one dot back from his kid, um, and I, I obviously can't see his hand, but uh, he was able to to remove a seven drop there, um, so it was it was a worthwhile play. It was just a little surprising that he he used the effect on on a pudding, but you know it let him run twelve k into into a body, which you know I had to let go because I didn't want to drop three cards for that, and losing my Kurobi, which I'm kind of viewing as my win condition here, uh, like a surprise Kurobi hit. Um, yeah, and that's what I do. So I, I kind of surprised him with the Kurobi hit there. I, I play it just to rest that blocker, and then I swing into the blocker. He actually counters out there. I, I suspected him to to let that go, but that let me, made me confident that I could go into this for 12k and get it, which was a mistake. So I'm, you know, my math isn't great this match, but I'm still doing well. I, I played the Parasparo just to finish off that attack. If I had used that 3 Dawn and just went um, 15k on that Kaido, I probably would have killed it, which, in retrospect, would have been a better move. Also, you know, using the Kurobi there wasn't super necessary because I didn't even get the kill on the kid blocker like I wanted to. I just didn't want him to have access to that ability anymore. And I saw the Django, which I felt was a good replacement for the Kurobi in terms of kind of going for the game. Um, but he top knots that Paro Sparrow, so another bottom deck. So it didn't really work out in my favor there. I only have 2k counter at this point, and so I am forced to take this hit. I'm thinking through it. There's nothing I can do. Um, I think also probably got a little distracted here. And yep, looking at his cards, just thinking through, and I take that. And just confirm the effect of top knot, which is a really, really good card. I think a lot of the Water 7 package doesn't get a, that much play, besides Polly, um, just because Iceberg is, is a, another leader that's not super favored. Um, which, that one I think is a little more reasonable. He's a very unique play style, so it's, it's, it's really, really difficult to make him work if you, in like a very specific meta, you know, I think if the meta was more varied, I think leaders like that would have more opportunity to show their stuff. Um, but when, when you don't really have a lot of things... When, when you know you're going to be playing the same matches over and over, and if you're playing something like Iceberg, if those matches aren't favored, you're kind of stuck. So I decided to do just a huge hit here. Um, either he gives up the Kaido, or he gives up the blocker, and he ends up doing the blocker, which is nice, and then I just play the Power Sparrow, um, which ensures I cannot lose next turn, um, because even if he plays another Kaido, I can counter out of, of whatever he does. So 
I am still in this, but again, back and forth game. And I, I would say he's favored right now, especially after playing two queen blockers. Um, it's looking really, really good for him. He still has the title on board. He has a big wall and he goes 5k. I block with the, or I counter with the holy. And then I take this hit, um, which is useless to me, but the trigger won't really kill anything. So, you know, I, I'm stuck there. So I swing 5k. So I, I, I'm probably going to lose this game. So I try to get, be a little sneaky. Um, I swing 5k thinking to see if he'll block. He does, which kind of loses in the game here. Because now I, what I do is I do 9k with Kurobi, rest that blocker. I know his last card is no counter. So if he can't counter out of this, I win. And then there, there I go, 9k per game. He has exactly 9k. Um, so yeah, this is why I wanted to show a second match because that was definitely lucky. Uh, he could have counter out of that first swing and that would have just won him the game. So I wanted to kind of run that one back, show you guys what it might look like if, if you're not in that position. I think there were a lot of turns I could have done better in that last match, especially with how I allocated Don for attacking. I should have, if I was committing to killing threats, I should have committed more aggressively and not been as wishy-washy with to to for the sake of developing board so we're gonna we're gonna run that back one more time i have three crackers in my opening hand so i have to keep it i play the the kurobi right off my top life just so that i can kill this khalifa quickly uh preventing him from uh getting that extra draw which we saw was very very valuable in that last game he, he used that ability and was able to to get a lot of cards in hand which was nice for him um he does a two-key counter here i swing again play the cracker it would require two more 2Ks to to get through that. He thinks about it for a second, so which tells me he probably has the counter in hand, um, but ultimately decides to let that go, which is the right move. But for me, is great because now there are two 2Ks in his trash and nothing on his board. My hand is looking very interesting. A lot of crackers, only one 2K. I do have a my my L4, so I can you know if I'm at two life, I can get a 4K counter, which is nice. Um, and that is one of the cards that I put into this new deck list um, compared to the old one. He gets another top knot, kills the Kurobi. So cleared my board, played a five drop kid. Pretty amazing turn for him. Uh, not much I can do. So I just play a cracker. I leave one down up for Althor, which is a 2k counter um, when you're above two life. And a uh, 4k counter when you're below. So he has which is a kind of a surprise turn for me he just kind of played two two law blockers um i guess nothing no real top end on his board um which was good for me he blocks that and just lets that die i guess he feels comfortable with three blockers on the board so to let one go um he does a 2k there and then i play seven drop lin, lin which gives me a life uh and i think that was a pretty solid turn for me got rid of a character on board got rid of a 2k in hand and then gained a life so I'm feeling decently good here. I know he can play nine drop Kaido. Um, I know he still has that kid blocker on the board, which is such a such a good card. And spoiler alert, one of the best cards in my uh, starter deck 10 red purple kid uh, leader. So really, really excited to play that. I had a lot of fun with it. Just haven't had a chance to test it on Sim as much uh, with the uh, restrictions still live. So he plays seven drop kid uh, and then it allocates the rest of his Dawn to his Luffy going into my cr cracker, I believe. Nope, he goes into life. So yeah, he's just trying to, to, to whittle me down, go for game here. He isn't really concerned about the cracker. Um, I give him 6k with the cracker, just trying to get a card out of hand. He ends up uh, blocking, and then he lets my 8k swing with Lidlin through. So he's pretty low on life at this point. I decide to play another cracker. I could have kind of done the Kurobi Jangle strat again, but I know he has a lot of cards in hand. I didn't think now was the time. Um, he ultimately blocks, which I found surprising, which I do think that I could have maybe won here. Uh, but then he shows he did have the counter in the first place. So I, I um, don't get that last life through. But I do have a very large board here. I have a Django, I have Cracker, I have Lumen, And he plays his Kaido finally. He probably just drew it. I decide to counter out there. I'm comfortable using the Kurobi because I don't think there's a one-drop blocker in purple that he would be running. Um, and then he does 8k into, or sorry, 9k into that. 
uh, Linlin. I still have 2k in hand. Now he's only at 6k. He can kill a cracker. But at this point in the game, if I can't win this turn, I still feel fine because he is pretty much out of cards. So I decided to 6k there, get a 2k out, which is great. Uh, 10k just to make sure this one goes through. And 12k. And that's the second match. Uh, I know the last one kind of ended in a very lucky way for me, so I want to just show one more just to see, show you that Arlong does have the the ability to to go and win those kinds of matches against Purple Luffy. And then to finish things off, I am threw in a one more Sakazuki match, another fan favorite for OPO5. Um, if you can't beat Sakazuki or Purple Luffy um, at least half the time, I, I think Eddie Deck is going to struggle in the next format. And so always get to show that Arlong can can beat a, a Sakazuki and a Purple Luffy on Sim. <laughs> and we all know Sim is a little different than, than IRL play, but if if you could do it on Sim, you could definitely replicate it in person. Uh, it's just good practice. So one more match here to finish things off and pretty good start for me. Get putting out turn one, get Sanji out turn two. He takes a life there uh, and we're going to get the ball rolling. He's going to start really doing doing Sakazuki things at this point. So he's thinking through his turn here. Um, as soon as he does that, uh, I am you know concerned about some removal, but he ends up playing the ulti. Uh, so that draws him a card instead of uh, removing that with with any uh, you know like a Houndblaze or something like that. So thinking through what the best turn here is, I could have you know done like a seven k on Sanji and then seven k on Arlong with like a roulette attached to it. But what I decided to do instead is hope that I get a holy off of that ohm search, because that felt a little more effective. The wider you can go against Sakazuki, the better. And so my hope was that I would see that holy um, when I search with ohm. He takes a while to decide if he's going to counter out here. And so I, I, I'm waiting. He ultimately does give me a, a counter there. And then I can swing 6k. So once again, he is deciding. If he counters here, he has a lot of cards in hand uh, and still a three life. So I think he's in a pretty good spot. It's not, you know, not a game breaking decision at this point. And he takes that one. And so I play Ohm and I get lucky. Holy's there. I play it. So now I'm feeling really, really good. Um, I got three attackers on board. Only one of them is is uh, tapped. So as long as I can keep that Sanji alive, I should be okay because I'm, I'm pretty confident he can't clear everything. And if he can, it will be a lot of cards out of his hand to do so. Uh, so now he's he's thinking through his turn. I I love Sakazuki's playstyle. I, I mean, he's a very, very fun deck. I know that he's going to be like one of the most popular leaders in OPO5. Everyone's going to be really tired of him. But, but the way he plays is really, really fun. It's a very kind of combo-oriented deck, which I think is cool. I personally can't even play it because um, out of all of the sets, the only one that I wasn't able to get uh, a box for was... The Paramount War set, so I just don't have enough of the Navy package to to do it, and it's just so expensive at this point. Um, so he does uh, play Great Eruption there, uh, so he's lowered the cost of a lot of stuff. I now know that a Luchi is coming, but I'm able to defend the Sanji, so at least I can get some attacks in next turn, and he kills my Ohm and my Holy. So I think that was like three cards to get in that removal, so I feel pretty good about that. I swing 5k with Sanji. At this point, I'm just trying to finish the game as quickly as possible, because you know that um, um, you know I know that I I can't survive an extended match against Sakazuki. I just need to be aggressive and try to get him to dump cards so that he doesn't have as many options for those combo plays in in subsequent turns. And so I do 5k with Sanji, 5k with Leader. He dumps two cards. Or Rebecca and Borsalino, you know, great for me. And I play Lilin. And he's deciding if he wants to give me the life or trash. If he trashes at this point, it kind of puts him at risk. So he gives me the life. And he's sitting on seven cards, two life with a Luchi and an ulti on board. So his board's pretty pretty aggressive. Um, his hand is very, very full, but he's only at two life, and I am an aggressive leader. So, you know, I see two life and I see dollar signs in my eyes. I'm I feel like I could definitely win this game. Especially with like a four life buffer. Because if one of those is a trigger, that's just another attacker for me. So he cycles. Uh start off, which just flat. Just the ability to cycle a card every turn for free is such a good ability. I think even if he didn't have that cost reduction built in, um, 
he's already just a good leader because he can just trash bricks whenever he doesn't want them and draw another card, uh, which is pretty, pretty crazy. And then the fact that his ability is free on top of that, he just has to attack. Uh, also very crazy. I think at the very least, like they could have maybe put a requirement to pay Don to use his ability. Um, it's a little bit more standard for, for the other black leaders, but you know, he's, He's a talented guy, Sakazuki. So he, he goes 5k. I give him that. I don't have a lot of cards in hand. Um, I don't want to start going down to like one or two cards just to, to sort of let that Sanji live when I know for a fact that he has ways to remove it anyways. So um, I'd let Sanji go there. I'm willing to take some life here because I'm hoping for a trigger in life anyways. And he plays Mancherry. So he's he, he's thinking through his combo. He uses Manchuri to draw he, to, to get Hina back from trash. He plays Hina, uh, and so now my um, my Lin Lin is minus five at this point. And then there's the Hound Beam. So yeah, I mean, he he got there, but that was that was his basically his whole turn. It was a pretty wild combo. Uh, and then he takes me for two life, and I do get the trigger that I'm hoping for. It's a Peros Pharaoh. So I'm thinking, do I go into the Manchuri? I'm, I'm looking what it does, and because it's just bringing cards to hand, I'm not super concerned. So I let that go, or I, I let him keep that, and then I do 8k, uh, play the Sanji. So I have a body on board. And then Django, another 8k. And so he is at no life. I have three bodies on board. One is definitely going to die, because I can't defend it that well. Um, I'm just hoping that something sticks. And right even before he attacks, that Parasparo dies, because he gets a nice H-trigger. So I have, I can counter up to or I have a rather 6k of counter in hand. So I, I don't think I'm gonna lose this turn, even though he has three four attacks. Um if I need to I'll block with Sanji for one of those attacks. Um if I get the opportunity. But instead he he before I even get a chance he plays Suru, which is a 2k out of hand, which is nice for me. And I know uh, a Houndblaze is probably coming here. He's kind of thinking through his combos. Yep, Houndblaze on the Hina, puts the Sanji bottom of my deck. Um, I take that 8k swing. He's only got 7 Dawn left, but he has 3 attackers. So, he's he's in a pretty good spot. Um, he does 7k with the Luchi. I counter that. He puts 3 Dawn on ulti, and I decide to counter here, using all my cards because I was worried about it, like a Houndblaze or something like that. Uh, and then at this point, he decides to concede, knowing that there's really no way for him uh, to win. So that concludes that match. Uh, pretty solid win for, for our long there. All right. Wanted to just flash the deck list up one more time so you guys have a chance to take a look at it. Um, thanks again for watching. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please drop a like. Please subscribe if you like the content. Um, I also stream on Twitch, so I'm going to put that link uh, in the description as well. I don't have a set schedule yet, but, you know, drop a follow. Uh, you guys can kind of see me do some of this testing live. And, you know, we could we could talk through why I, I had certain uh, cards in my deck. Uh, and always open to hearing what other people are cooking with uh, and what other people have found success with. Also, if there are leaders you want to see, I can't make any promises that I will do them justice, but I'm always happy to, to try new leaders and, and try something a little different. Thanks for watching, everyone.